What's up, gamers? Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about the death of Xbox because a lot of the biggest Xbox fans, Xbox YouTubers, podcasters, collectors, it feels like everybody is incredibly pissed, specifically at Phil Spencer, and claiming Xbox lied. And I want to discuss their anger, their vitriol, and kind of why, to be honest, this has been obvious for years. I have been making videos about the downfall of Xbox for like five years because I never made this from a place of gloating or some sort of like, you know, yay, I'm glad they're failing. It's that this has been, unfortunately, incredibly obvious. Even as thousands of people told me I'm wrong, Xbox will exist forever. I think we all realized that they have not been running a profitable business and it was never going to work. But let me break down their anger. Let's take a look at a lot of uh, very angry tweets from Xbox fans. And, and why I feel like this is, this is the end. Hi, hope you're having a great day. And if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So last night, they announced that Indiana Jones specifically is coming to the PlayStation 5. And a lot of Xbox podcasts, a lot of uh, the biggest fans... Uh, are definitely not pleased about it. These are these are per people I've personally talked to. They're nice people. I'm not hating on them. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people that are saying, okay, the Xbox brand is finished. Colt Eastwood here, uh, got to be one of the biggest Xbox fanboys I've ever known. And, and I mean that respectfully. The guy definitely loves the brand. He loves the games. Unfortunately, there was a quote where exactly six months ago, Phil Spencer on camera directly said, we're going to bring a couple of our older games just as an experiment. We're going to bring them to PlayStation. This ended up being Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves. They were just tinier games that were much more old school and said, okay, let's just try it out. And he specifically said the words, this will not be Starfield and it's not Indiana Jones. It's tinier stuff. So a lot of people are like, okay, he lied. I mean, he just straight up lied. So now people are bringing up a ton of quotes from the biggest Xbox journalists and stuff where they kept saying, no, Xbox is not porting its games to PlayStation. It's hopium from fanboys. Obviously, uh, Jez Corden, uh, the biggest Xbox leaker of all time, uh, he was wrong. Everybody was wrong. Uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that I have been reporting on this now for so long because the whole experiment of Xbox has been the Game Pass push. They have consoles, they have games, but the idea was always like trying to be Netflix. But as video games get more expensive, it now costs hundreds of millions of dollars to actually make stuff. I mean, they spent, PlayStation spent $300 million just making Spider-Man 2, and I like that game. But man, $300 million is a ridiculous amount of money. So the idea of games getting cheaper, I like the idea of games being sold for the lowest cost possible, but Game Pass, it was never going to work. Game Pass, the idea of going, okay, the lowest price to get the most games, of just, hey, pay for your Netflix subscription and you'll get the most possible games, it was never actually going to work out. It's been painfully obvious, but... Today, Phil Spencer, just about 20 minutes ago, went on stage at Games Comedy, did a long interview, and his statement is kind of rambly, but he essentially said this. Clio Brow sort of transcribed it. Phil Spencer on Indiana Jones coming to the PlayStation 5. We run a business that's definitely true inside of Microsoft. The bar is high for us in terms of delivery. We have to give back to the company because we get a lot of support and what we're able to do. So you can pretty much tell that what he's saying is what I've been reporting on now for years, which is the fact that the money is running out, that Xbox has always been a tiny for funsies project of Microsoft. If you look at the financials, if you look at the market cap and stuff like that, real nerdy numbers, there is trillions of dollars of Microsoft money, but a lot of that just comes from Windows, from Word, from their other licensing stuff. The idea of Xbox has always been, okay, how can we make some extra for funsy stuff? Let's make some hardware just for the entertainment to ourselves. But now that games are getting so expensive, Microsoft is starting to say, 
okay, why are you making zero dollars? Why are we licensing Indiana Jones? Why are we working with Lucas Films? Why are we spending huge chunks, like billions of dollars with a lot of their acquisitions and stuff and making no money back? Now, a lot of the replies, people are pissed. Uh, a lot of the biggest Xbox YouTubers, this guy, Gaz, uh, I think this guy kind of hates me. No offense to him. Uh, Septic Sauce is a great Twitter handle, by the way. <laughs> Uh, he has been talking about the fact that, honestly, PlayStation is completely ripping them apart. Gaz has been saying, Phil Spencer realizing the marketing budget is now going to increase tenfold as Xbox fans evangelize the brand, reduces to single figures, yet the Xbox budget is about to completely dry up. Xbox fans, they fooled us. Now the question remains, will you continue to fall victim to their lies? <laughs> Uh, maybe it's not that serious, buddy. And no, that doesn't mean you need to switch to PlayStation to become another victim. Join the resistance. Now, I scroll through it. I, I can't tell if he's saying it's time to go PC. I feel like a lot of people are starting to go PC. I have been gaming more on PC this year than I ever have in my life. The last couple of years, I've been gaming more on PC. I feel like this channel kind of blew up because I do like PlayStation exclusives like Spider-Man, God of War, Gran Turismo even actually kind of blows my mind. But I feel like PC gaming, obviously, once you get over the hurdle of kind of learning it, like I know people that only game on PC, it's really easy to y'all, but I feel like there is a learning curve because when it comes to consoles, the fact that I can just plug in a controller, instantly play a game, it auto syncs, it auto updates, it automatically works on my TV. There is a learning curve. I know people would say there's not, but I feel like it's a difficult at first to learn about drivers and updates and compatibility and graphics cards. But once you get past that hurdle, obviously PC gaming looks the best. A lot of times PC gaming is cheaper. I, I'm personally a big fan of mods. I think mods are incredibly freaking crazy cool. So a lot of people are starting to say it is weird to think about the death of Xbox because this is it. Like, maybe we'll see a couple more games that exist for a short while on Xbox before they come to PlayStation. I've been getting a lot of angry tweets of people saying, I own Xbox for Game Pass. I don't care if the better version's on PlayStation. Honestly, feel free to play where you want to play. But I think at this point, the Xbox console is just a Game Pass machine. It is just a way of like, okay, it's a place to play games cheaper. Not better, not cleaner, not cooler, but at least cheaper. It is the budget console, even though it does also cost $500 and you might as well get a PS5. Uh, I got some Destin Gary tweets here. Six months ago, Phil Spencer said Indiana Jones and Starfield would not come to PS5. Now Indy is. You can well actually that all you want, but it's seen by many as a betrayal. It becomes more and more difficult to feel confident or trust in what Xbox says, period. Now, Destin Legary literally is one of the biggest Xbox podcasters of all time. He and I have discussed stuff here and there. He and I have had some professional disagreements, but I feel like we've both also respected each other because even when I have a bad take and he roasts me, a, I deserve it because I'm a goofball and I'm very opinionated. I like to talk about games. Even when I'm stupid and wrong, I still enjoy talking about games. And I've roasted him a bit for some of his bad takes here and there. But I think we both have this informed place we're trying to come from. If he is saying, okay, this is it. This is the death of Xbox. I think that this is the canary in the coal mine. This is the guy that if he is giving up, it's time for Xbox people to straight up give up. If you asked me six months ago if we'd see all Xbox games on PS5, I'd say you're crazy. Today, yeah, they're going full slate. Probably not tomorrow, but it seems inevitable. Damn, this really got you upset. I'm not upset, but I see no reason for them to keep realizing or releasing any content on the Xbox ecosystem exclusively if their biggest exclusives are making them tons of money on other platforms. Now, to be clear... I don't think a lot of these people are really mad. I think a lot of these people are just interested in it, especially a lot of these professional like journalists and stuff. This guy's, of course, got all the consoles. It's not like he's losing games if they go to PS5. I think it's just interesting from a business standpoint because... Xbox has existed now for decades. They've existed for over 20 years as this self-standing independent brand with their own games, their own ecosystem, their own fans, their own hype, their own controller style and stuff like that. It is wild to think that Xbox is just dead. Like, 
in my opinion, exclusives are what make the console. Like, third-party stuff is important too. Some of the biggest profiting games on PlayStation are actually third-party stuff. Call of Duty and stuff, like uh, we've seen the leak financials. Call of Duty on PlayStation makes them billions and billions of dollars of free money that they're not even having to dev for. But it goes beyond that. Exclusives are why you pick a console. Like, there is good indies on the Nintendo Switch. I think the Nintendo Switch is one of the best places to play indies, especially like pixel art, stuff like that. But the reason you buy a Nintendo Switch is for Mario, for Pokemon, for Zelda, for Metroid. It's for the exclusives. The reason a lot of people pick a PlayStation is because, hey, it's got all these exclusives and all the games you actually love, all the big stuff, Dying Light 2 or whatever, all of that is going to come to the console, it's going to play good on the console, and all your friends can come to the console as well xbox has lost that xbox now just says hey we have this all digital edition in case you want a freaking edition that doesn't even have a disc drive on it but also hey we have game pass i feel like xbox as a brand will never recover from this very obviously i mean there has been some leaks about the idea of Project Latitude, that there is literally an entire development house now inside of Microsoft that just ports games to PlayStation. This is literally hundreds of people whose entire job is to take games and put them in the best format possible on the PlayStation. And right now, the PS5 is already a beefy system. If you look at any like uh, the tech analysis stuff, digital foundry and stuff like that, they do technical breakdowns. Games run incredibly good on PS5. Obviously, they run better on the uh, on the PC. But my point is the fact that a lot of these games are going to run better on the PS5 than they do on the Xbox, and we're about to get the PlayStation 5 Pro. I have now seen Doom the Dark Ages. I made a video about that. I have seen more Doom the Dark Ages than anybody on the planet. I actually got to see a special secret trailer for it when I was at QuakeCon. I did a video screaming about it. It was extremely freaking cool. But my point is the fact that not only was that incredibly mind-blowing, but having seen it, the gore, the carnage, the craziness, that is a game that needs a PlayStation 5 Pro. It is going to look extra epic and insane. I see so many people that are not just giving up on Xbox, but even Xbox Game Studios. I can't wait for Xbox Six to, or sorry, for Elder Scrolls Six to come out and be total crap. A lot of people are saying, "Look, man, even the stuff you do love, Bethesda is an Xbox Game Studio. All they're making is Fallout seventy six, Starfield, and mobile slop." <sighs> I am in a space now where even the games that look the best, I have talked extensively about how I think Avowed looks incredibly good. Oh my God, I love Avowed a lot. It's coming down to the thought of like, okay, do I even want to play this on Xbox, right? I have an Xbox. I've got a Series X right there. It's unplugged and covered in dust because I haven't used it in a long time. But my thought is like, okay, even if this is an exclusive for 60 days, 45 days, 30 days on the Xbox, but a month later it comes to the PlayStation 5, and I like collecting trophies, it's going to look better and play better on the PlayStation 5, is it worth even buying? Is it worth even playing? I think at this point, if you have both, if you're a multi-console owner, like obviously this is my job, so I do have an Xbox, a PlayStation, a Nintendo Switch, and a really good gaming PC, I think I'm in a spot where I think I'll probably beta test stuff with my Xbox. If it comes to Game Pass, I'll play it there, and the stuff that truly blows my mind, I'll buy the real version on PlayStation. And that's super weird to think about, but what do you guys, well, how are you, where are you at on this map? Do you own an Xbox only? At this point, you guys, uh, it's probably time to sell your Xbox and buy either a real console the PS5 or the Nintendo Switch, or it's time to start trying to build a PC. Or, you know, uh, I, I use pre-built PCs for the most part, or I have one of my buddies help me build a PC. I think it's time to go PC. If you can afford it, it's definitely the way to go. Uh, but what do you guys think about this? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. By the way, I have a huge review that's currently about to come out for Concord. It's the next big PlayStation 5 exclusive. It's like a live service hero shooter. I've played a bunch of it. It's incredibly bad. I've already filmed it. I'm editing that video, but uh, 
it's it's terrible and i make a whole video about why it's terrible it's called like do not buy concord i'm going to release that later today so be sure to keep your eyes open for that because uh it's uh it's not good and i want to explain with a bunch of visual examples why the game is really not good Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.